we get a lot of questions asking how to paint this or how to paint that. Uh, I don't like giving you formulas because formulas only shows you a single point of view and a, and a single tiny, tiny little way of doing something. This question was, how do you paint fur on a white animal? Well, I don't have a formula for that, but here's what I recommend. What I recommend is learn how to see. Observe, observe, observe. That's always your key. Not only observe, but then take your observations and translate them into paint. Now, here's one way that you can do that. Well, suppose if you were baking a cake, you wouldn't put the ingredients together by saying, I'm going to put a cake in here, and I'll put two parts of cake in here, and three parts of cake in there. You wouldn't do that. You would start with whatever the flowers, eggs, sugar, and so on. Every image has ingredients. So if you will learn to observe the ingredients that make up the image, that gives you the clues as to what to do. So I've got that listed right here for you, a place to start. If you, whatever image you're looking at, whether it's a, a, a puppy, a white puppy, or whether it's a woods in the forest, or whether it's falling water, or a bowl of apples. It doesn't matter what it is. If you learn to switch your attention from what it is to the ingredients that make it up, then you will be surprised at how you can inform yourself as to how to do it. So, what are the ingredients? Switch your attention. It's not a puppy. It's not even a white puppy. It's not even a dog with white hair. What is it? The ingredients are, well, ask these questions. What values am I seeing? What colors am I seeing? What textures am I seeing? What values am I seeing? That's always the first question. Look for the values first. In order to look for the values, then you need to look for where the shadows are. Where are the shadows on this white puppy? Now, when you look at this, you won't see a whole lot of white. There's not a whole lot of white there at all. So white puppy is not going to tell you anything about what to do. But if you switch your attention and you look for shadows, We've got two kinds of shadows here that enable you to see that as a white puppy. We've got what we call form shadows. That's the, those are the shadows that are not receiving light, the shadows that are hitting the image itself. And we have cast shadows. Those are the shadows that the puppy is casting. So that tells you, first of all, where the light is. This cast shadow is going to inform you of, that the light, because the cast shadow is on this side, the light's going to be on this side. So what values are you looking at when you do that? So there's your first question. So I'm going to do just a very, I'm not going to paint a white puppy for you, or a puppy with white fur, but I want to just show you a very quick little diagram here of how you can work the information there and come up with, in the end, a white dog sitting in this light, this particular white dog sitting in that particular light with those particular colors reflecting onto it. Because that in the long run is what you think you really want to do. Whatever your subject, you would begin by of course doing a quick a quick little um, preliminary sketch of the subject. And I, I'm not going to um, I, I'm not going to go into kind of any de detail here, but I want to just give you enough information here so that you can see where I am. And uh, so, so that, there we go, right in here, and he kind of fits right in here. His eyes kind of fit right in there. His nose, blah blah blah. And then we see the the body kind of come coming down, um, sort of from the ears, sort of like this. And so it doesn't have to be a detailed drawing by any means. Now, what I want to do now is to say, where is the shadow? Where are the shadows? because that's the most important thing that's going to, to tell you what values you need. So what I see here, if I'm going through, uh, going through here, I'm seeing that there's the cast shadow right here, connects to the dog right in there, comes right in here, connects right in here. So that tells me that the light is right over here. So this side is in strong light, this side is in strong shadow. So then I can go through here and kind of indicate what's in shadow. 
right in here. So what do I see in shadow? I can tell this is in deeper shadow on this side. So that's the kind of kind of how the shadow goes. It's really in deeper shadow on this side. And then I go that second step and build a no tan of the image. Uh, if you don't know how to do a no tan, you can go to our website at dynamize.com and click on free video lesson and I show you there how to I, I, I explain no tan how it works and show you how to build a no tan which can make all the difference in the world in in um, in your drawing and your painting so this is what I like to have underneath I like to have a value or I like to have an area on the painting itself underneath that shows me where the shadow areas are and that pretty much is a very quick 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 no tan of what I'm looking at right there with that with that puppy so that's the first step let's see get that that's the first step the second step what values am I seeing in this shadow area in this in shadow where this form shadow is hitting that puppy what values am I actually seeing? All right, if I squint and I look right over here, I'm seeing that I see, I see that pretty dark for a puppy. That is pretty dark. And one way I can find that is to, let me get a piece of paper here and show you. One way I can find that, I can hold a white piece of paper up next to, to this area of the puppy and I can see the difference. I can see how dark that is. And you'll say, I can't make it that dark, it's a white puppy. If you don't make it that dark, you're not gonna do it right. So let's just forget about that part. What value am I seeing? What color am I seeing? I am seeing blue, blue puppy. Well, yes, indeed, I believe the sky might be reflecting into that puppy's color. It could be that the, the, the photograph might have been photoshopped just a little bit. Let's go with what we see. So we see it dark. I see that in that, that side of the puppy is very dark. It's dark in that shadow area. You see it against the paper. So then what, how do I get that? Here's the best way I know to get that. I go into, uh, if I see blue, I use blue. All right, so I'm going into blue. I'm just guessing at what, what I'm going to pick up. Now, okay, so that's blue now. If I hold my... If I hold my brush right here, I'm seeing that blue is a little bit grayer. So if it's a little bit grayer, orange is the uh, orange is the complement of blue. I know I can do that to make it grayer. Now I've got that, and you may say that's too dark. All right, let's just put a little bit of that paint on a piece of paper, and let's hold it right up here. Whoa! Look at that. That's not too dark at all. So what do I do with that information? I put it right where. I see it and I don't fuss over it. I don't fuss over whether I'm making puppy fur because it's not time to make puppy puppy fur yet. I'm just, I'm not even fussing at all. I'm just laying colors in where I see them. I lay colors and values where I see them. Now my eye is also seeing this is the same value right here but it's grayer. So let's see what we can do about that. I said uh, complement, you always use a complement to create a grayer color. So I'm moving into the complement right here, putting it in the blue, same value. Let's check it out and see. Uh-huh, there it is right there. You see that? So then I'll just take that gray, that gray that I mix and see, all right, there we go. All over the puppy's eye, don't separate shadow and light over over any uh, <laughs> over an eye, whether it's a puppy or a human, you'd never want to separate those. I see that an awful lot, where an eye will be in shadow, but it will have all of this bright color and contrasty color in there, which doesn't look like it's in shadow. All right, so there's your there's your clue right there for how to see values and how to see colors. So values and colors. Or the value first, the color next are going to be your clues. Now I'm going to quickly throw in something to enable us to see that a little bit better and that is I quickly throw in here cast shadow that will be very much darker cast shadow right in here that will be very much darker and I'm going to work that cast shadow because the puppy's sitting in that cast shadow right there just kind of work that up into it right there 
and uh, not much, just a little bit. Then let's look at the, what's not in shadow. Now, again, you don't see fur. You see values. And so if you're looking, I'm just going to, now I'm going to switch my attention to down here. I'm not going to try to do the whole puppy. Just going to switch my attention to down here to show you how to read this thing. Read the values, read the color. Now you can see there's a little change in value right in here. What are we seeing when we look at that value? If I take a piece of paper and hold it up here, I'm seeing that as a darker value, the, the parts on top, it also seems to be a little bit purple. All right? So I'll just go over. Make It's got to be a little lighter. It's darker than the paper, but it's lighter than this. So, and it's... Uh, it's a little bit more. Let's get that a little bit even lighter. Let's get it right in here. A little bit lighter. Um, it is warmer. No, well, you might say it's a little bit more towards brown, isn't it? More towards like gray or brown. So let's just put a little bit of that in there. Let's get it uh, raise that just a little bit more. Now what you'll notice, let's put it right here, see. Let's see how much dark that's too dark. So, change the value. What you will notice is that this, this color will end up being a different color from the, from the color of the shadow side. So you pay attention to that. That needs to be even a little bit grayer and maybe a little bit lighter. So we, we raise the value very gradually, adding a little bit more white. All we're doing here is looking for value areas. All right, let's try that again. Let's put, there we are. We're very, that's it right there. We're very close to the value of these, these areas. These are, these are little shadows that are within, uh, you call those little, little halftone low lights. So here's how we do that then. We put them where we see them. Okay, so I see it right here. I'm going to put it right here like that. I may need puppy fur yet, have I? I put it right here. I see it right there. I put it, it's getting a little bit darker as it goes down here. I put it down there. I put it right in here. In fact, I think I'll just put it everywhere. Maybe let it get a little darker as it goes down. So that's what we're seeing right in there. It's a little bit change in value there. So that, what this does then is this gives us, uh, I'm just going to take it up like that. What this does then is this gives us a correct reading on what we're actually looking at. So then we can begin to take this value and kind of work it into the, the shadow side. Let's do it right over here. And get those values in before we even start thinking about texture. Now, here comes the next one. What value, what color, we address the value here here, we're addressing the color here, here, we would do the same thing there. Now we can look at textures. The textures are nothing in the world except values. They're little value changes. And what do we see there? Again, remember I said read uh, your observation, pay attention to the observation. What we're seeing, not fur, we're seeing lights. And I always see those lights as in brush strokes. So what, how would the brush move? How would the brush move to create this light? It would move kind of like that and have kind of a flip on it. How would the brush move to create that light? How would the brush move to create this light? So that's where we are now for creating textures. What value is the texture and how is it moving? Not fur. So I'm going to start out with white and I'll hold my palette knife there and I'll see how actually that, that particular white is pretty close to what we're seeing. I'll get a little bit of uh, orange in it just to kind of tint it a little bit. Now very quickly, again, not to have to paint fur, but load a brush. And the fl more flimsy the brush is for something like uh, something that's a, a, a long flowing texture, that's kind of a flowing texture there. So the more flimsy the brush is, um, the easier the texture to make. So what I'm saying, how would the brush move? Okay, the brush, where do I put it? Yeah, I see this flowing, this, this lighter texture, and I think it would probably register about right here. And if I give it a flip, it would kind of do like that. And where else do I see it? Where else do I see it? Uh, what else is it doing? It lives about right here, 
and then it would a little flip like that, a little flip like that. And then let's see where else we see that changing. We see, I say actually changing some value now. This texture is beginning to change value where it connects with this value right here. And then it would sort of flip, it flip down like this. So I'm seeing it move this and then that way. So I move it in this and then that way. I see it moving here. Let's get this loaded a little bit more. I see it moving in here this way and that way. This way and that way. This way and that way. And eventually, with enough, let's hold this brush back right like that, with enough of these lighter textures on that darker, these lighter texture pieces here, on this darker version here, eventually then it will translate as, as animal fur. Now, adjusting values, I've shown you a very simple a very simple way of thinking but within all of these then you begin to adjust value you will you've got your major value areas and now you've got the texture areas and from those you begin to adjust the value areas and as you move along eventually you will have what you will call like puppy fur all right now one of the little thing <clears throat> in order to show the white puppy fur over there we would need we would need it to be a little bit darker like right over this area right in here so let me just throw in something in here that could we could make it just a little bit darker easier to see right here uh, it's a different color let's get it the right color a little bit easier to see if we do it that way and now on that side let's do that again what are we seeing we're seeing that light, that, that middle, this middle value of shadow in here is actually turning light. See it turning light right in here, and then we see some textural things happening. So, let's show just a little bit here. Take the brush, what is it doing? It is doing this. Brush again, what is it doing? It is doing this, 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 this. It is doing this, this, this. And be sure that we keep keep our eye on what uh, what textural stroke, what value is that textural stroke. We see a, a textural stroke right here that does like that. We see another one here that does like that. We see another one here. Let's go right in here that does that, but backwards. There and there and so on. Put a few textural strokes in here. So that just kind of gets you going on how to look, how to look at fur. A very quick and a great, very quick little explanation <clears throat> of how to look a look at fur, how to think about the value of fur, and then how to translate it. And so. Um, from this point, you just ask the same questions over and over again. Moving back into the shadow areas where you see differences in value. How dark is it? And which direction do you make the brush? Which direction do you make the brush move to show that darkness? So same thing back in here. You do this. Which way, which way is the brush moving? Which way is the brush? What was which way is the stroke moving? Add a little bit of value into there. Which way is the stroke moving? Moving. Which way is the stroke moving? If you don't see it moving in any way, then you don't you don't put any stroke there, and you'll be surprised at how little you see happening in the the uh, the fur of the animal itself. So that's kind of a little rough and uh, uh, kind of a little rough way of showing you how to think about these. What value you're seeing? What color you're seeing? What textures you're seeing? And when you're looking at your textures. What, how does a brush need to move, what value needs to be on the brush, and how does it need to move in order to show whatever you're looking at. Whether it's animal fur, whether it's uh, tree bark, it won't make any difference what it is. If you learn to ask these questions, you'll be surprised at how you can move right in and, uh, and you'll be able to, to show images in almost any kind of light from your point of view, not according to a formula that somebody has given you. So if you find this helpful, uh, ask a question in the comments section down here. 
If you have something you would like for me to address, and also we have all of our uh, video tutorials on diamize.com. Look at the titles, look at the descriptions, see if you see something there that you might find helpful. And there's a quick tip.